Hey, it's Debbie. And I want to do special podcast on a topic <laughs> that we've talked about many times, but I continue to see this area, a struggle an ongoing area of opportunity, fasting or not. How much is too much for the high charging, high performing individual that tends to take everything to the extreme. We tend to do something that's good for us. Let's do it all the time. And we're doing it a little bit too much. That's fasting. And as athletes, we are exercising once, two times, three times a day for those that are triathletes, trying to fit in your strength training, you're trying to do your yoga, your core work, mobility work, hopefully on top of doing your swim, bike and run workouts per week, or if you're just a cyclist, you're doing some cross training and more. So I think it's an area we need to continue bringing up as with all the hormetic stressors, fasting, cold therapy, sauna therapy, HIIT training, you know, all these things are great in small doses. More of it is not effective and can cause trouble. So let's go into the information I'm trying to collect and put it into blogs on debbiepotts.net. What's the right amount of fasting, the duration? Because a lot of my clients, I'm getting to help with health investigation, assess what they're doing, look at their lab tests, but also look at their training program, look at their eating, look at their biometrics, their HRV, blood sugar, all that stuff. But timing your nutrition, making sure are you hitting the protein goals. We've gone from eating lots of fat to not getting our protein in. And now we're afraid of all carbohydrates and not eating anything but meat. So it's really figuring out you as an individual, what nutrition plan works best for you based on your activity level, your intensity, duration, frequency, type of the workouts you're doing, stressors, external stress in life, how busy you are, are you just like on overdrive, rushing around all day? And then looking at those hidden internal sources of stress we don't really know exist unless we do functional lab testing and correlate that with our nutritional therapy assessment, signs and symptoms, and much more. Now, athletes, we tend to be committed. We're consistent. Some people are all or nothing, and it's easier to follow a plan. It's easier sometimes not to eat. So fasting is great. Some people don't know how to just eat one serving or eat and not go into a binge and go out of control. Have a little snack of something and not let that snack be grazing for two hours and then have dinner. So sometimes it works, but having structure to our day might be easier for a little more of us. We tend to like things organized type A personality and have a plan, but we want to have a purpose to each plan. Your workouts, you get them in, but what is the purpose of each workout? Are you doing the same workout over and over again? Are you changing it up every month, every quarter, you know, doing everything in variation, having flexibility in our metabolism, switch from fat to carb metabolism, and not just be stuck one or the other. We want flexibility. We want variations switching up your strength training routines, switching up what cardio program you're doing zone two. And then some days you're doing a zone four or five workout going to zone one. So having a plan really helps, but let's look at what happens when we don't really listen to our body and do a little too much of everything. So I put together some articles into a blog so we can talk about it. When to eat or not to eat before exercise. So it kind of depends on your goal. Are you doing fasted morning exercise? Is your goal to improve performance in that workout? Are you trying to just lose weight? Are you just trying to get morning exercise to help your day to wake up? Are you looking at longevity? Are you a female or a male athlete? Where are you in your hormone cycle if you're a female athlete? There's a lot to go into it. So there's not one size fits all. It's kind of complicated, but as I always say, it's N equals one experiment, figure out what works best for you. That's why I do coaching assessments. Let's look at what you're doing now and let's figure out what we can tweak course, correct, and mix it up each month. So if we head down 
some articles. You can find this on my blog page, debbiebots.net. When is it? The, oops, there's spelling error. Best, best time. They're missing S in there. Best time to train fasted or fed. Okay, let's dive in. The effects of fasted versus fed exercise on performance and post-exercise metabolism. Here's a review, a meta, meta-analysis. The abstract here says, lots of information, but literature identified 46 studies meeting relevant inconclusive criteria and looking at quality. And we wanted to know if exercise performance is improved if we do it fasted or if we eat something before. So the findings indicated that pre-exercise feeding enhanced prolonged, but not shorter duration aerobic exercise performance, fasted exercise increased post-exercise circulating free fatty acids compared to fed exercise. It is evidence that pre-exercise feeding blunted signaling in skeletal muscle and adipose tissue implicated in regulating components of metabolism, including mitochondrial adaptation, substrate utilization. They continue to say that the study's findings support the hypothesis that fasted and fed conditions can influence exercise metabolism and performance. Pre-exercise feeding bolsters prolonged aerobic performance, while some evidence highlights potential metabolic adaptations that fasted exercise may induce in peripheral tissues. However, further research is required to fully understand the acute and chronic physiological adaptations to fasted versus fed exercise. Well, what does that tell you? It depends. <laughs> they don't know. So we have to look at the type of the workouts you're doing. What is the purpose of that workout? I've talked previously what I've learned from Ben Greenfield coaching in a seminar he did back in 2000. Wow. 19 it was four years ago. Fasted exercise should be zone one, zone two, low intensity, fat burning, totally easy recovery, simple, get out for a walk, go for an easy bike ride, go for an easy jog. If that keeps your heart rate down, hiking, swimming, you know, doing something low intensity, that's ideal fasted. When you are doing more a higher intensity workout first thing in the morning, that may depending on the person and the gender, vary your fueling beforehand, which can be just calories in your coffee or your tea, not a big meal, because I know like me, I'm working out 5.30 in the morning, 6 a.m. I'm not going to eat. It doesn't work good. I'll be sick working out, <laughs> throwing up. So timing what we ate the night before is what we look at for morning exercise. If you're doing more high intensity or speed workout. Right. So if you are doing a 12 to 15 hour overnight fast for athletes, that's recommended 16 hour plus fasting is not ideal for an athlete. So make that longer fast day on your recovery day. Right. So not late luteal phase for a woman, but somewhere in the first half of your cycle on an easier day. If you want to do a 24 hour fast, do it on the rest day that you're just walking, doing easy stuff, maybe once a month. Okay. So we have learned, and I've talked about this to fasted exercise. I'll repeat 12 to 15 hour overnight fast, your previous meal dinner, it's 12 hours before, for example, that would have more your nature's carbs as starchy vegetables. Okay. And then Workout in the morning. Some people say females might do better accessing their fat stores if they have some calories before. So look at Dr. Stacy Sims research on the female athlete that's working out higher intensity workout. And then post-workout, we'll talk about that. Some protein in that 30, 45 minutes for women, men can wait up to three hours. So if you want to wake up and work out low intensity workout, should be okay and not cause additional sources of stress in your body. If you're doing low zone one, two workout, if you're doing harder workout, make sure you fuel up the night before 
and or maybe a little calories in your coffee or tea or little shake, simple calories with some water. Now, post-workout example, we've talked about when to eat afterwards. If you are doing another workout in eight hours, research has shown, and I talked about this from Ben Greenfield, having something to eat after your first workout in that window hour afterwards, for example, and then fuel up for the next workout. Typically I swim except for today. I'm supposed to be swimming right now in two minutes, but today I took it off so I can get some work done. I'll go for a walk instead, but I'm not doing as much exercise as if I ran hard in the morning, did lifting and then swam. I'd have to time eating around 9 a.m. So I get some good protein, fat, some carbs and be able to digest it before I go swimming. So this is all about nutrient timing. So fasted exercise, but the other flip side of that is, are you eating enough? Are you hitting your protein goals? Are you fueling for your workouts appropriately if you're working on performance? And are you trying to refuel and repair the muscle glycogen? If you did a hard workout, are you eating in the right window time post-workout to replace what you just used up? Muscle glycogen stores and repair that mu protein, the muscles with the right amino acid profile, getting enough leucine in that amino acid profile. So not eating at all pre and post-workout can backfire and your performance may be crappy. Maybe you're not losing weight. There's lots to look at. So let me go back to the articles. Here's another article. Is it okay to work out on an empty stomach? As I've said, this article says as well, it depends on your body composition, your goals, your overall health and preferences. Working out, the article says, while fasted, also known as fasted cardio, does have some advantages. Could be leading to fat loss while preventing ingestion while exercise. As I say, if I eat a meal and work out, I will be not digesting that meal, it will be interrupting my workout. On the other hand, fasted exercise is not for everyone. You may feel, this is feel weaker and lethargic. So you might not have enough energy to perform. Now, side note, you need to be fat adapted before you start doing fasted workout. It's going to backfire even more and your performance is going to be crappy if you are not metabolically flexible and can tap into those fat stores to fuel you up for the morning workout. So what is fasted cardio? What does that mean? So this article says fasted cardio is aerobic or endurance exercise. Remember what I just said earlier, zone one, zone two, aerobic or endurance exercise on an empty stomach without eating anything beforehand. Quote unquote, fasted state four to six hours after your last meal or snack could be fasted state. In order to be truly in a fasted state, this is when your glycogen levels are low. Some experts say that you have to go more than nine to 10 hours without eating anything. Fat and carbohydrates are the most important fuel source for skeletal muscle ATP synthesis. So that when carbohydrates are mostly not available due to fasting, we think fat is utilized instead. We hope. It continues to say here in this article, most people do fasted cardio workouts in the morning before eating anything for breakfast. This may mean that someone has been fasting eight to 16 hours or more overnight, depending on their schedule, when they stop eating at night. For many people, the morning is easiest to work out as myself without any fuel in their system because they just woke up and you've already fasted through the night. And remember cortisol is highest in the morning upon awakening. So wait ideally for that coffee, wait to eat that food, but electrolytes in your water as unsweetened almond tea is what I like to do. And if you feel like it, squeeze lemon in there even better. So as article says, Fasted cardio is that aerobic endurance exercise, zone one, two. It is easier. It's a fat-fueled workout. You're not doing an anaerobic workout that's burning 
a little bit of fat and mostly carbohydrates that will change it up a little bit. And that's where I think you need to look at what is the duration, the type of the workout, the intensity, what heart rate zones are you working out in? And is your goal fat loss and your performance? So yes, I can do all this fasted, but is my running speed crappy? Is it slower than I want? Am I feeling strong and fast and powerful? Or am I just getting through it? It depends what your goal is, right? I want to get faster. I want to be stronger and I want to get leaner. And don't use age as an excuse. It's how you train. You need to train differently than you did how many years ago. So what are some health benefits? Well, I reviewed previously on a podcast and video blog, blog about Ben Greenfield speaking for Dr. Pompa seminar once, the one back in 2018 on the fasting benefits. So I won't go into this, but you can read this on my website. May boost fat burning and weight loss is one of the benefits. It may. So some people say it doesn't change. So I'll read the bottom of this article actually is interesting. When you are in a fasted state, your body doesn't have to use, doesn't have any glucose or glycogen available to be used as a quick source of energy. So it uses stored energy instead. This means that your body pulls energy stored in your muscles and stored in body fat via fat lipolysis, fat oxidation, in order to keep you fat fueled. Lipolysis is a metabolic pathway through which lipid triglycerides are broken down into fatty acids and glycerol, the need to break down that fat to be used as fuel during fasted or intense exercise. Now, intense exercise, you're going, your fat fuel is coming down. If you do metabolic testing, you'll see where your metabolic crossover point is, where the fat fuel goes down and what point of heart rate points as your carb usage goes up. So higher intensity exercise is very less fat to zero fat. The result of boosting your fat burning is what you hope that happens, but that's not always the case. You might not lose weight from that fasted workout. It won't have dramatic effect, it says. Another way in which fasted cardio may support fat loss is by spiking post-exercise calorie burning. After your fasted workout is done, your body uses extra calories to help you recover, which raises your metabolic rate a bit for 24 hours. Now, I've never heard that for low heart rate fat burning exercise. I've heard of the that post-exercise post exercise oxygen consumption from doing high intensity workouts. So I have to look at that, what their resources are, references. That, but the article continues to say, not every study has found this benefit to be true. A 2020 article published in the Open Access of Journal of Sports Medicine states that our review of literature suggests that there is little evidence to support the notion that endurance training and fasted mediated increases fat oxidation. And we recommend that endurance athletes should avoid high intensity while fasting. I agree. I'm learning again, going back to if your goal is performance, if I'm doing high intensity training or speed run or my bike class Wednesday, where we're trying to do power watts, add some calories in my coffee as my layered creamer with some the vanilla coconut sugar. And that's okay. Have some collagen, have some MCT oil. It doesn't mean I have a big meal, just have some calories. And the research says here, fasting decreases body weight, lean body and fat content in both trained and untrained individuals. However, they say there are conflicting data regarding the effects of fasting on glucose metabolism in highly trained athletes. Differences in experimental design severity of calorie restriction, duration of participation or oh, participant characteristics could at least in part explain such discordant findings. As I've said, I started doing fasting and fasting workouts and doing the fat coffee back in ugh, 2009. And whenever Bulletproof Coffee started, I was one of the people that jumped on that train early on. And what happens, I think we're, I was doing too much fat and then I wasn't eating. 
I wasn't hungry or I was being strict to not eat. Did that serve me? Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> so my body continued to train, but I was doing adding to my stressor bucket, doing too much. So anyways, the article continues, you know, the positives may decrease nausea. As I said, I don't work out well with a meal or if I have steak or protein and go swimming, even if it's three hours before I seem to not digest it yet. So that's where I, I'm trying to experiment having something different. That's easy to digest. Even uh, a nice quality, real food bar is layered. Superfoods has the mushroom adaptogens in it and have that with some protein in it. So a pre-workout snack, not a big meal might be okay. At higher intensity, but really prioritize doing fasted workouts or doing a high intensity workout, having food or a shake post workout, or even a cup of bone broth. Now the drawbacks might make fasted exercise might make you feel fatigue easier. If you, you know, you're not going to get a good night's sleep. You're already kind of tired working out on an empty stomach. You might have more fatigue depends on your life stress. I think as well, and your quality of sleep, um, uh, when you last ate, cause a lot of times I stop eating at four o'clock in the afternoon. I have lunch, dinner, kind of one meal weekdays during the school week at two, three o'clock. And I don't often eat later on. I'm not being as strict as I was last few years of three o'clock kitchen closed. I would you now like have a spoonful of almond butter or I had something last night. I forget, but cause I started to feel hungry. So I don't want to go to bed feeling hungry. So have to listen to your body could lead to weakness, less power output. So that's why I think it's important to look at morning fasted workouts, not being so strict. And I'm speaking about myself too, that I'm not going to eat because it's easier not to eat. And it's a pain. I have to figure out, Oh, what can I eat and take something to work out or have something in a shaker bottle in my water. But example here says one study concluded that overnight fasting compromises exercise intensity and volume during sprint interval training, but improves high intensity aerobic endurance. Another meta analysis uncovered findings indicating that pre-exercise feeding enhanced prolonged, but not shorter duration aerobic exercise performance. So again, it depends on the type of workout duration intensity. And the time of day you're working out, if I'm working out at six in the morning versus eight or nine in the morning, I probably will have something before a long bike ride. If we're not riding till 9am on a Saturday, I I'm not going to be fasted that long or have some my coffee, but then I have to eat a bar halfway on my bike versus if I eat something earlier, I might not eat anything, but element T or electrolytes in my water or S feels train on a three hour bike ride. So again, depends on the timing of my workout, the weather as well, and duration and intensity. Big thing here may contribute to muscle breakdown. Everyone talks about the people that are anti-carb that there's no essential carbohydrate. There's essential amino acids. There are essential fatty acids, but there's no essential carbohydrates, but yes, I can do gluconeogenesis, make new sugar from protein and fat, but do I want to break my muscle down? No, I'm trying to build it up. I'm fighting that age at, after 50. I have that breakdown of muscle catabolic. I'm working on anabolic and as our hormones get lower and stress is higher, we're more catabolic state. So the more protein I need to eat throughout the day, the more lifting weights, the more sprints I need to do. So the last thing I want to do is break down my muscle. So here's in the article, it says they've been talking about fasted aerobic workouts, but it's important to point out that fasted exercise may negatively impact muscle growth and strength. Some studies have found the evidence that fasted workouts can cause muscle tissue to be broken down for energy. I do not want that. So I understand I can use protein to break down for energy and fat, but you don't choose ideally. Yeah. Fat all the way, break it down. I don't want you so much. My body protein. I need you. So if you're into bodybuilding, if you're trying to put on strength and build that muscle up, if you're into cross training, lifting weights, there's a potential for fasted aerobic workouts to hinder your results. So you want to be mindful of how often and intensely you do fasted cardio. 
Now I'm known in your IQ. We talked a bit before, but I have the chart I go through with clients that look at their fueling pre-workouts, food choices. I don't have it listed up here, but what to have beforehand your workout, but also I'm going to look at when is the ideal time for you to do fasted exercises on a different chart. And then I want to go over this article is Dr. Stacy Sims, which I like to listen to what she says, post-workout matters for women more than men. And I just quick blurb on here and I'll have back to the blog. But in, this is what I think is happening. We're not eating enough as athletes and we're trying to get stronger and faster and perform our best in sports and life. But if we are doing so much fasting, are you eating enough in your eating window? Are you timing the protein in nature's carbs post higher intensity workout? Are you timing that protein each meal? And I can't hit my protein goals if I'm doing one meal a day. It's really hard because you only can get 30, 50 grams in and you can't overeat protein because that's one of the benefits of being more keto carnivore-ish that you are really full because <laughs> you can't overeat on steak. But what Stacey Sims, Dr. Sims has said that if you, let's back up here. So if she says how we need to focus on getting the muscle protein built up that women may not be eating enough for their body to perform basic functions like making muscle, regulating metabolism, maintaining homeostasis after accounting for the energy they use for training. She says that's bad for health and performance. Exercise does not work without the nutrition to support it. Fueling direct, directly around your training can help you avoid going into low energy availability, L-E-A. While she's seen some women become more in tune to their pre and during exercise fueling when needs, one area that still falls short, and I am myself having this area of opportunity is recovery. Stacy Sims talks about that. So many women who admit to skipping their post-workout snack because they're trying to lose weight. For me, it's, I get busy, get home, you shower, you start getting ready for the day. We, I forget like Sundays, we go for a long run. We're out. We go walk on the beach. We get coffee. We run errands. Suddenly it's two o'clock and I haven't eaten. And trying to plan ahead, do your meal prep, like take a, a shaker bottle and put some protein powder, creatine powder, and maybe a, a mix with a little bit of carbs in there is something I have to do for myself. So Dr. Stacy Sims talks about men and women need to have that post-workout fuel to help for recovery muscle repair. But men again, have it easier. They can wait up to three hours. So I'll scroll down here on this article it says important to note that as a woman, our recovery window to take advantage of all these benefits of post-workout. So the previous paragraph says taking advantage of a recovery window is 30 to 45 minutes versus men, three hours recovery window. We, during this recovery window, this is a time right after exercise when your insulin levels are peak, opening up multiple pathways, metabolic pathways to expedite your glycogen storage and muscle repair process. She calls this the golden window. You're not only primed to transport the carbs you eat straight into your muscle stores. So don't eat crappy carbs, eat real food carbs nature's cards, but also shuttle the amino acids. Remember essential amino acids, getting that leucine. This is the time when we shuttle the aminos into our muscles. So they can pair, repair the damage and build you back up stronger. So woman, we have that 30 to 45 minute window. This is where our insulin sensitivity declines after that. So the mistake I've been making is being busy after workout, I'm not hungry after a workout, get home weekdays. I go work out in the morning, shower, get ready for work get my work brain. And then I have swimming most days, as I said, so it's like, Oh wait, I didn't eat in that window. So it, it takes planning and getting a new habit in. So if I don't eat in that 30, 45 minutes, what happens? 
as I just was saying, your insulin sensitivity declines. So that means it'll take you, your muscles longer to absorb the glucose from your bloodstream. As a result, your overall glycogen storage is lower. So if I waited two, three hours, I'm not going to get the same glycogen repack, restorage, right? So she says, two to two and a half hour later, this is what I keep having problem that I do. I wait, your glycogen storage rate drops by 50%. So think of your muscle glycogen stories, storage as think Dr. Gabrielle Lyon said this uh, as a suitcase. And if I could pack all my clothes in that suitcase, fill it full as I could 30 minutes after my workout. But if I waited two hours or more after my workout, I only can pick half of that and fill it in there. So then if I go on vacation, I only have so many clothes to choose from. So I'm going to be limited on outfits. And so if it's working out, you're going to be limited on energy for your next hard workout. Huge. But all it takes is us creating new habits of packing in our shaker bottle, put it in your car with some ice. So it's ready to go or put it in a cooler in your car for summertime huge difference. And I'm going to experiment this myself. And men, you need to do this too, but notice you, you are lucky you get up to three hours, but if you are with a female athlete training partner, your spouse, don't think they're judge them for eating right away. Cause I'm never hungry after I work out. Right. You're probably the same. You just, you're not ready to eat. But if I just have some liquid calories, like Brad Kearns has this uh, vanilla bean whey protein powder with creatine in it, and if I put that in my bottle and then I have these minerals from my HTMA test, I found out what minerals I'm low in and that's called Vicon mineral balancing drink. I had a scoop of that and mix that together. I just started working with team keto. There's some supplements I put in there too, or mix it up and have that ready to go purse workout. And I got to do that tomorrow because tomorrow I have my morning spin class, which is high power Watts doing quality workout. So anyways, I thought this was a great article. It just came out. So be sure to prioritize protein in that recovery snack. Women, even more than men need to protein post-workout. So women don't be afraid of protein, prioritize your protein. Tell that to all my clients, we need it fast. So that's why I like doing the shakes or you can do bone broth, but having the whey protein Second runner up for higher leucine is a beef protein. So you can use equip E Q U I P and discount with our low carb athlete code for all those. But, um, what's another one equip. And then there's, oh, paleo Valley has a bone broth protein. You could do as well. If you can't do whey. I have a lot of clients when we do their lab testing, they're not able to do whey proteins. We have to look at other options but we want to make sure that amino acid profile, if it's plant-based has the right amount to get that leucine high enough in that amino acid profile for the protein. Okay. So, uh, back to Dr. Stacy Sims talks about sex hormone, progesterone, exacerbates muscle breakdown in women. So that makes us even more catabolic. So think of your luteal phase end of your cycle or day 20, 28, we need to make sure we have fight that muscle loss. So we want to be a more anabolic phase. So if you can get more protein to protect your muscles and come back stronger, it's really important to prioritize that protein. You don't have to be strict carnivore, but just prioritize protein in your meals in that post-workout window, getting your bone broth, having your protein as your main entree in your meals. So maybe you do two meals a day, Focus that on protein, timing those nature's carbs in your evening dinner meal. Protein's harder to digest. So I try to do it earlier in the day and maybe have it easier to digest. Shake protein mix and you can do just protein powder and water that's easy to break down. So she talks about women recover faster, 25 to 30 grams of protein with five to seven grams of branch chain amino acids or essential amino acids within 30 minutes of a hard workout. So if you are doing hard workouts two or three times a week, hopefully not five days a week or every day, you want to alternate hard, easy, easy, hard workout. We take longer to recover, but maybe your recover 
re will be faster. If you start getting in the habit of post-workout window, have that 25 to 30 grams. So that's one to two scoops of protein powder. Maybe add that creatine. We just talked to Cynthia Thurlow about creatine in that water, shake it up and you're good. So pair some carbs with that protein and the two work in harmony to increase your glycogen storage rate. So this is where we talk about not being afraid of carbohydrates and saying all carbs are evil. It is timing the carbs, but what type of carbs, not processed crappy food, packaged food. We're talking real source carbs and avoiding wheat, gluten, and grains for most people, but getting more the berries or some more natural sources, nature's carbs, especially what's in season. Now, uh, we want to talk about the carbs and protein together post exercise to help reduce inflammation and boost immunity. She says, if you delay calorie intake, you stay in that breakdown catabolic state. I don't want that. So your body won't start repairing until you take some of food. Even if you eat enough in the rest of the day to meet your needs, you're not eating post-workout acts the same as not eating enough. So good example myself, I tend to not eat later in the day because I get busy after my workout. If it's in the morning or Saturday, Sundays, I find this always happening after a long bike ride and run, you come home and shower after your bike ride, then suddenly you got to make lunch and it just takes time. So we just have to plan. So I would make sure you're not eating too low of calories, planning ahead, doesn't have to be a meal. Just get those liquid calories. Okay. So that's article from Dr. Stacy Sims, nailing your golden recovery time. Going back to the fasted exercise, more articles you can review. Should you do fasted cardio? Should you eat after fasted cardio? What should you eat? This article says combination of protein and complex carbohydrates, as we just talked about, which will help you refill and support muscle recovery, healthy fats, and they say fiber, everyone can argue about that, but important components of healthy post-exercise meal help you control your appetite and prevent you from overeating. If it's fruit, hemp seeds, and coconut milk, a salad with protein, avocado, um, yeah, like quinoa and stuff like that. Most people don't properly soak and sprout their grains and seeds. So you need to be aware of if you have gut health issues side salad, olive oil, you know what? I just made tuna salad. You can get wild caught tuna canned in uh, Costco and then the avocado oil chosen foods mayonnaise, or you get primal kitchen mayonnaise. And then I chopped up or kneeled in, uh, pickles and added some salt, sea salt and some seasonings and cut up carrots in the market, farmer's market carrots and celery. And it's very good. I must say, I tried that this morning when I broke my fast. So coffee before fasted workout, and that's some good information, intermittent fasting, fasted exercise. So lots of information on this blog. So I won't go into all today. I have to finish, but I put the articles in here. Fasted cardio. Should you try it for fat loss? Benefits of fasted workouts, drawbacks of fasted workouts best pre-workout fuel. If you're trying to maximize fat burning, what to eat beforehand. I don't know where that one's from. Oh, very fit. Now I, I don't do gluten wheat and I have most clients, everyone needs to avoid gluten when I do their testing. So just avoid gluten. Anyways, there's lots of other options, but if you are going to eat, I wouldn't say, um, piece of toast with honey, but sometimes, you know, fermented sourdough bread people can tolerate, or there's, um, they're called, there's some gluten, uh, not gluten-free, it is gluten-free bread. That's more keto type, uh, ones. If you want bread, there's some good options out there and you can have some water with almond tea, but I like to just have some, my coffee. If you don't do coffee, have mud water. You can have that hot water. There are other non-coffee drinks that you can get and add some ingredients to that as your mushroom adaptogens, maybe the Laird's creamer with has a little coconut sugar for the flavoring to have the turmeric or mocha or vanilla. 
different options. So read that article. The other one levels came out with does what effect does fasted exercise have on your metabolism? Another article exercising before eating can burn fat and improve metabolic flexibility, but also can affect your fitness performance, how to strike a healthy balance. So this is a great article. I will talk about as well, some good resources and references in here, but fasted or exercise, does it help you lose weight? And does it impact your workout? What's the bottom line? So let's scroll down here. I think it's interesting. Whoops, let me go down a little lower. There was one study. So you have to look at the studies. That's why it's N equals one, because the studies half the time, they're done in a small population. They're done on men age 20, 24. So you got to look at who, what the study was about. Who was it conducted on? How long was it? What did they eat? Did they, how did they track what they ate and didn't eat? So in exercise, 16 women over six weeks found no difference in fat loss between women who exercised fasted compared to who exercised after eating in the study period. It says another related issue is post-workout hunger for those who exercise fasted. So maybe they're eating more, didn't really, it was kind of a wash because they ate before or didn't eat and then they eat more afterwards. So those had did fasted exercise and fed exercise with and without post-exercise meal they found that fasted exercise without post-exercise meal resulted in the lowest 24-hour energy intake. It also produced the lowest energy expenditure and highest hunger. That means that although these people had short-term decrease in energy intake, they burned fewer calories and were more hungry. <laughs> Another section here, how does fasted exercise impact workout results as we keep talking about? Okay, so we'll wrap it up after this because I only could talk so long. Fasted versus non-fasting had impact people exercising more than one hour. This study in 2018, Dr. Carson looked at 23 studies on people doing cardio in the fed versus fast, fasted state found no difference in exercise performance when workouts were less than 60 minutes. So again, intensity, duration, big part. When the performance outcome is less than an hour, and almost 60% of the studies we looked at, performance was not impaired by fasting. So if you're working out in a short period of time fasted state, your performance might not suffer. If performing at your best isn't the purpose of your workout during, say, a quick recovery walk or casual weekend jog, then doing so in a fasted state is not a problem. There are studies showing no impact on the fasted condition, but never a benefit of greater than the fed condition. All right. So those prioritizing performance goals, gaining strength or muscle, or those who like in high endurance and high intensity workouts, exercising in a fasted state could negatively affect your workout results. Research also suggests that performance improves when you eat before longer workouts. Meta-analysis led by Dr. Carson and published in the Scandinavian Journal of Medicine and Science in Sports found that 54% of the studies show that pre-exercise feeding improved performance for people doing aerobic exercise longer than 60 minutes, possibly due to the additional glycogen that is available to help fuel the workout. The key takeaway, according to Dr. Carson, if you have a long exercise session or performing in some kind of longer race, you should fuel to perform your maximum. For people looking to gain strength and muscle mass, there is no reason to train in a fasted state. Do we lose muscle mass because of fasted training? No. But is it going to make your muscles bigger? No, says Dr. Carson. In a small study, 16 men doing resistance training found that not eating breakfast before exercising decreased exercise performance in the gym. Plus research on muscle strength and fasted training highlights that eating protein post exercise is most important for recovery when exercising fasted. It's worth noting that other research suggests that while exercising in a fasted state may impair performance in a particular workout, doing it repeatedly could lead to beneficial adaptations over time such as improved glucose control and fat burning. Again, 
who is this study on? What was that study? What type of resistance training were they doing? What was their heart rate? Their men, what age were the men? It wasn't done on women. And really going back to that prioritizing protein post-workout, I think is what you need to look at. So what does this article say from levels on the bottom line on fasted exercise? It could be helpful for those who want to optimize metabolic health and improve the body to be metabolically flexible. And you know what that means, right? Being able to shift from fat burning back to carb metabolism fuel, back to fat. So main fuel tank ideally is fat fuel because we have say 40,000 calories available of stored fat. And then our carb metabolism, we have say 2000 calories of those, but we have the flexibility shift back and have that backup fuel tank. Okay. So the benefits of fasting include reduced concentrations of many, many metabolic biomarkers associated with chronic disease, including insulin and glucose. So fasting, if you're going less than 60 minutes, so say 45 minutes, cardio zone one, zone two, if you know your zones, get testing with someone with Pinoe metabolic testing kit new year near you, but knowing what that zone two is that can help you with insulin sensitivity and glucose management, chronic diseases. Okay. So figure out what your zone two is where heart rate monitor. Cause most people don't train in zone two, even though they say they're doing zone two, they don't know what it is. Exercising fasted can help your body switch fuel sources. As I said, carb to fat using or metabolizing different types of energy like fat during exercise is great for you when you want more sustained energy while keeping your insulin levels low. Low levels of fasting insulin are a sign of higher insulin sensitivity, higher fat oxidation, and low metabolic disease risk. So overall, it's an excellent biomarker for optimal metabolic health, says this article and levels. So if you're looking to maximize performance by endurance sport or in time trials, you're best served by exercising fed. The same goes for the day that people compete in a triathlon. There aren't reasons to fast performance the day of, but what you eat is important because we want to be not blunting our fat oxidation, right? So listen to S fuels and Dr. Dan Plews for different viewpoint on that. So another point, and then I'll start to wrap up exercise itself is King research has found that staying active improves, as I said, insulin sensitivity. We know it boosts endorphins. It reduces cardiovascular risk and helps you stay healthier longer, right? What you would hope to achieve from fasted training is ability or enhanced ability to utilize fat as fuel source during exercise. Dr. Carson says, but again, the training and the exercise itself will provide most of the adaptation. We may be able to augment that adaptation to the certain extent by doing our training and fasted state. One important caveat, most of the research done in this space is on exercise and fasting in the morning, eating breakfast or not before a workout. So for example, as myself, I lift at 5.30, often run a couple of days a week at 6.15 a.m. So the time of day is going to be different if I did 2 p.m. So the article says from Dr. Carson that, again, looking at when this research is done, is not clear what the effects would be if you're doing evening workout. For those who want to do fasted exercise first time, Dr. Carson suggests doing so when performance is not your main priority. So you don't want to do exercise fasted the day of your half marathon, obviously, but rather some prior training sessions. What I recommend is that Dr. Carson recommends that fasted period minimum of 10 hours, closer to 12 hours if possible. So it looks like you're having your dinner before eight o'clock PM and then exercising before 8 AM the following morning. And this is what we've said based on previous studies and talks with Ben Greenfield and what we would tell athletes is 12 to 15 hours is long enough fast for athletes. So not breaking your fast from last, when you stop eating at night till morning time should be up 12 to 15 hours. Try fasted exercise might be something N equals one experiment. So figure it out, low heart rate workouts, pay attention how you feel during and after the fasted training. And again, I think you need to be a fat metabolism, fat adapted is 
people say it's not such a great word, but if you are metabolically flexible is what we should say, then you can try experimenting with this a little bit easier without, you know, having a lot of side effects. So more and more on my blog of these different articles, I cut and pasted in here. So you can continue reading on the pros and cons of fasted workouts. And then I put in the LEA, what is low energy availability and looking at signs and symptoms of LEA that's in here. And then nutrient timing, talking about the secret to muscle strength gains and recovery. We talked about that a little bit and making sure we hit that golden window, 30 to 40 minutes, 45 minutes after workout for women, men can wait to the three hours, having that protein, maybe put that creatine in there and then some, maybe some berries in a smoothie, whip it up together. So pairing the carbs and the protein post-workout when it's more muscle glycogen depleting, right? So lots of info there. Pre-workout is going to be different for everyone. I don't like eating a lot. As I said, I usually just put some calories in my coffee. So if I'm doing more higher intensity, I might do that Laird's coffee creamer that has a little bit of coconut sugar in it, but doesn't spike my glucose up, but gives me some fuel. So my body doesn't feel like it's starving. And often I, I stop or eating earlier in the evening. So I have to listen to my body. So tons of information in this blog post that really isn't me writing. I'm, I'm telling you that I know it's not me writing article. I'm just putting everything in one spot so I can find it. So my browser doesn't have uh, 50 different websites open, but benefits what's pros and cons female athletes on and on and on. So check that out. Let me know your thoughts, your experiments. So head to the webpage and then you can write any comments and I will respond and let me know your thoughts. You can head to that website, find more things from Endure IQ, Dr. Dan Plews, Professor Grant Schoenfeld has a book. He's one of the uh, co-authors of What the Fat, a great book of, okay, what can I eat if I should try eating? Here's some healthy foods in green, orange, kind of eat once in a while, or red. So you can look at the page of, yes, this is good to eat. Maybe on the list, this is for athletes. I think someone just asked me this, like the pumpkin, the potato, the squashes, yams, taros, that's going to be good quality carbohydrates to have post-workout or evening meal before a hard workout or race. That's on their yellow, but this is for athletes. No, this is what they talk about. Deep fried, highly processed vegetable oils, having, you know, too much fruit and, you know, obviously avoiding the processed deep fried meats, the sweeteners equal Splenda, that kind of stuff, nut seeds and legumes that are in vegetable oils, highly processed vegetable oil, fats. You want to avoid canola, sunflower, rice bran, soybean, corn, grapeseed, safflower, palm oil, margarine, looking at that. So that's one resource. So that's from whatthefatbook.com. And then under IQ, kind of go through this with clients. But if you are training, what to have during training is an experiment. Women, men, you're different. So it might be a little different. When to have just black coffee. I don't ever have black coffee because I don't like it. I like a little splash of organic heavy cream or add some um, MCT and collagen in it sometimes. So kind of a black fat coffee, a low carb breakfast, carbohydrates when they are good to time into your workouts. And you can see the suggestion on here. If you're watching the video on the low carb athlete YouTube channel, if you're adding 20 grams to 60 grams of carbs with maybe your black coffee with a fat coffee, that would be black. So it's black coffee, nothing in it. That's before you're doing a HIIT training or anaerobic capacity workout. So 90 minutes to hour and a half, Dr. Dan, please even suggest timing, having that training fuel. This is pre-training too, 20 to 60 grams of carbs. So a low carb, high fat athlete doesn't mean zero carbs. It means carb timing based on when you're focused on performance. So if you are doing a shorter workout, you can maybe again, go to just black coffee and when to have some of fat coffee, maybe some protein powder in there you can have that together. 
I'm going to have some food. That's going to depend. I also believe it's looking at my clients, what they did and ate the day before. Cause a lot of times, for example, me on Fridays, I'm busy. I have calls. I go swimming. I lunchtime Fridays for fast Friday swim. It's really fun. And then I go back into work, but then we go out to dinner often in a beach walk on Fridays. So I, I don't eat enough. I get, I have to plan and I get some beef jerky with me and, or have a, a bar because I need something to eat. I'd rather real food, but I don't want to eat at two and then eat at five because I won't be hungry. So that impacts my fuel plan and performance on Saturday for my long bike ride. So I have to eat a little bit more often. I do need, feel the need that I need calories before my long ride on Saturday versus if I eat more on Friday, Saturday, I could just do coffee cream and just go for my bike ride to eat a bar or something during the ride. So it so depends is my conclusion. So hopefully that helps kind of topic. I want to dive into more what to eat, when to eat and when not to eat, and then how to time your carbs, nature's carbs and protein post meal, and even your evening meal to help your performance. If you're doing fast workout the next morning, but if it's higher heart rate workout, if your performance suffering, maybe you do a little bit something in your water or coffee. So let me know your thoughts, your experiences, your questions, and what you're trying out. Talk soon.